Hi guys, and welcome to question 6 of June 2014's Unit 2 Biology paper. Um, this is an evolutionary relationship question and looking at how we can use technology um, to, to compare proteins and DNA. So, uh, the first one, uh, we're going to look at the way of using uh, proteins to do that. So, all primates produce a species-specific type of hemoglobin, and an antibody against human hemoglobin could be used to compare evolutionary relationships. Describe and explain how. Um, so this is quite a tricky old question, but it's one that you can learn a set answer for. Um, and basically what you do is you mix together antibodies and hemoglobin, or blood, uh, from two different primates. So, first one. Mix blood and antibodies from two primates. Now, you don't get any marks in this question for saying how you get those antibodies. Uh, normally you'd use a separate species completely to form the antibodies, but we're not going to worry about that. So you mix the two together um, and you look for a precipitate. They're going to form a precipitate when they, the complex is between the antibody and the antigens on the haemoglobin form. And depending on how much precipitate you get, um, that shows how similar the protein or the DNA is. So more precipitate means closely related. So observe precipitate. And this is something you can regurgitate. So observe the precipitate. More precipitate equals more closely related there we go so oops sorry about my handwriting um, a better way to do this realistically um, is by looking at this thing called DNA hybridization um, um, and the way hybridization works is you basically heat up DNA from two different species mix it together allow it to cool, um, and you get hybrid DNA forming, um, and then you slowly crank up the temperature. Um, and basically the idea is, um, the lower the temperature that those two strands separate at, uh, the, the further away they are related, because at the end of the day, the more bases you have in common, the more hydrogen bonds will form in the, uh, in the hybrid strand, and the more, the more heat energy, more thermal energy it will take to break it. So there we go. The temperature at which a double-stranded DNA separates into two single strands is the separation temperature. I've just said that. Uh, they recorded the mean separation temperature of DNA in which both strands were from the same species, and then they recorded the mean decrease in separation temperature. Okay, so uh, the bigger the decrease, the further they are apart. Okay, uh, so let's have a little look-see. We've got some results in this big, scary-looking table right here. Um, and it says, these data suggest that gibbons are the most distantly, relate, distantly related to humans. Explain how. So, humans and gibbons is right here. Okay. So, yeah, they've got the, the largest decrease in temperature, which means they are further related, uh, few, uh, less and less related. So, you don't actually get a mark for saying about that is uh, the, the biggest decrease in temperature. You have to explain it a bit more. So there must be fewer hydrogen bonds in the hybrid strand. And therefore, that means that there must be fewer complementary base pairs. Oops. Fewer complementary base pairs. There we go. So these, these last couple of questions, there's the, there's the option to really over-answer these questions, but as long as you explain it clearly, uh, you don't need to write a great deal at all. So it says they were differences in separation temperature of the DNA formed from the single-stranded DNA of the same species of primate. Suggest why. Let's have a little look-see. Uh, well, don't forget, you can have mutations, you can have uh, non-coding DNA regions, uh, different alleles, 
uh, a bunch of repeats. So any any of those will get you an answer. I'm going to go for mutation, which is the easiest one, the sort of the cheats way out, really. Um, there we go. Question 6b, part 3. We've got a calculation to do by the looks. The scientists assume that the decreases in separation temperatures are directly proportional to the time since the evolutionary lines of these primates separated. Gorillas are thought to have separated from orangutans 20 million years ago. So, gorillas and orangutans. Let's go back to the table. Gorillas. Oopsie. Gorillas. Oops. And orangutans. Gorillas. Orangutans. So, 3.5. Okay. So, all it basically wants us to do uh, is take that information. 3.5 gorillas is it gorillas and orangutans? Yes, gorillas 3.5. Uh, that's 20 million years ago. And then it wants humans and chimpanzees. So we've got to find basically we've got to find how we get from 3.5 to 20 million and then apply that information to humans and chimpanzees. So let's do 20 divided by whoop. 20 divided by 3.5. Uh, let me get a calculator. Two seconds. Uh, 20. It should be 20 million, sorry. 20, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 zeros divided by 3.5 equals big old number 571428. 5.71 um, and then we're going to use the information for what was it chimpanzees and humans chimpanzees and humans 1.7 okay uh, okay 1.7 uh -huh. so what do we need to do for that? Uh, let's have a little look, see. 1.7. So if we multiply that by the same scaling factor, that should work, right? So 1.7 times by 5714285.71 equals, yep, times that equals 9.714. Two two eight five seven one million years, but there's our answer: nine point seven one million years. So quite a tricky one, that a two-stage calculation, and it's a little bit of a puzzle. But once you suss out what's going on, it's not too bad. So let's give ourselves eight out of eight full marks so far, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Please stay tuned for video seven. I hope you find it useful. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe.